So our lesson for this day is all about ellipse. Okay, but before we start with uh, discussing ellipse, we need to know what are the basic parts of the ellipse. Okay, so in ellipse we have a center. Okay, so remember that we have a center, and then we also have focus. Okay, so this is our focus. So let me label the center, and then we have focus so these are focus and we have foci two foci okay uh, the plural of focus is foci and then uh, the length from the uh, this point here to here as you can see this is the longest diameter of an ellipse and the longest diameter of ellipse is called major axis okay remember that major axis Okay, and the end point of major axis is called vertices. Okay, vertices. And this is called the minor axis. Okay, minor, major axis, minor axis. And the end point of minor axis are called covertices. Okay, covertices. And we also have a line here from a line between two foci, okay? And the line between two foci, okay? So this is called the principal axis, okay? That is called the principal axis. And we also have a perpendicular line with our principal axis and major axis that passes through our focus. This is called the latus rectum, okay? I know you are very familiar with that, okay? Okay, so also one thing to remember is that the length from our center to, our, to one of our vertex is A, okay? That is A. So the length from our center to our vertex is A, which means the length from, uh, the length between two, two vertices is 2A, okay, 2A. And the length from our center to our co-vertices is B, Okay, that is B. So the length between uh, two co-vertices is 2B. Okay, so that is A, this is B, and the length from our center to our uh, focus is C. Okay, that is C, which means the length of our principal axis is 2C. Okay, so half of the major axis is called semi-major, which is A, and the half of minor axis, which is called semi-minor axis, is B. Okay, so we need to familiar, familiarize ourselves with that, okay? Now let's proceed with the properties of our ellipse, okay? So the first property that, that you need to remember is A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. So it really resembles the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Except that the longest length is A, okay? As you can see, this is A, which is the longest part, okay? Next. The second property that you need to remember is the 2A, 2B, and 2C. Okay, so you need to remember where, uh, what those 2A, 2B, and 2C means. Okay, so 2A uh, means the major axis, 2B means the minor axis, the length, and 2C is the principal axis. Okay. Uh, third, uh, you need to remember the... You need to remember that A is greater than C, okay? Of course, A is the longest length, okay? A is greater than C, which means A is also greater than B, okay? Next, the length of latus rectum, or what we call this the lateral recta for the two, is 2B squared over A. Okay, you need to remember that. And also, we have this eccentricity, or E, which is given by C over A. Okay, the, this is not the Euler's number. Okay, this is the eccentricity, eccentricity which uh, tells how curved an ellipse is. Okay, and the last property that you need to remember is the equation of our directrices. Okay, so we have a directrix here along our major axis, okay? So those are the directrices. 
And in this type of ellipse, we have x equals plus and minus a over e. Okay? So that is the equation of our directrices. Because we have two directrices, right? So we have a over e. So the length of the uh, semi major axis over the eccentricity that would give you the equation of the directrices. Okay? So. That's what you need to remember in the properties. Now, you need to remember that there are two types of ellipses. Okay? The horizontal ellipse, okay? which means that its major axis lies along the x-axis, and the vertical ellipse, which means the major axis lies on the y-axis. Okay? So you need to remember that we, when we have a horizontal ellipse, okay? Center at origin, okay? This is our equation, okay? X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared equals 1, okay? Remember that that will be when our major axis lies on our X axis, okay? The second thing that you need to remember is the vertical ellipse center at origin. We have the equation Y squared over A squared plus X squared over B squared. And as you can see, A, okay? As to where the A is, that will be your major axis, okay? So as you can see here, our A is in the x-axis. And this one, our A is on the y-axis, which means that A will determine where will your axis be. For our first example, we are going to identify the center, the vertex, the length of major and minor axis, okay? Given this equation. So x squared over 36 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. Okay. So as you can see, obviously, this is, we have a center at origin. Okay. So we are going to write center at 0, 0. Okay. And then next, we have the vertex. Okay. So in the vertex, uh, if you have remembered what I said quite earlier. Okay. So x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. Which means our a squared is 36 and our b squared is 16. Okay. So... We're going to write that one. A squared is 36, and B squared is 16, okay? So we have our A equal to 6, right? We're going to get the square root of 36 and square root of A, and we have the value of our A. And for B, the square root of 16 is 4, okay? So right now, it will be very easy. Because the length of major axis, okay, the length of major axis is determined by 2A, okay? So 2A, for our major axis, we have 2A. Wherein our A is 6, so that gives us 12 for the length of our major axis. For our minor axis, that is 2B, right? 2B. So we have 2 times 4, which gives us 8 units. Okay? So right now, let's try to graph this one. Okay, so now let's try to graph uh, our equation. So center at our origin, okay? And we have our A, 6. So that is our semi-major, okay? So count six units, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we also have one through six, okay? So this is now our vertex, vertices, I mean. And we have our B4 and four. So one, two, three, four, four, okay? So now we can actually connect that one and that will give us the ellipse given with, given from our equation okay so this is now our ellipse x squared over 36 plus y squared over 16 equals 1 okay next uh we have our ellipse center at hk okay so which means our center right now is not at origin okay so you can see this is our origin and the center is right around there okay so still we have these uh, two types of ellipse okay the vertical and the horizontal so let's start with the horizontal okay so when we have the horizontal ellipse center at hk our equation would be x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1, okay? Where our h and k is the center of our ellipse, okay? Next, the vertical ellipse. So in vertical ellipse, we have y minus k squared over a squared plus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1, okay? So this is our vertical ellipse. As you can see, our major axis uh, is parallel to the y-axis, okay? And if you can observe this one, as what I said earlier, Okay, our A determines where is our uh, major axis be parallel to. Okay, 
Okay? So, as you can see here, we have our A, which would be parallel to x-axis. And our A here would be parallel to y-axis. Okay? And always remember that the A squared, okay, that is the biggest length. I mean the A is the most lengthy compared to B and C. Okay? So now let's start with our example. Okay. For our example, we're going to graph 9x squared plus 64y minus 1, 1024y plus 3,520. Okay? So first, we are going to transform this into the equation that we have known earlier. Okay? Because this is in general form. Okay. So let's start. We have 9x squared plus 64. Okay? As you can see, we have two y's. So we have y minus... Okay? So what are we going to multiply with 64 so that we can have the product of 1024? That would be... 16. Okay? Actually, you can just divide 1024 with 64. Okay? So, we have... Okay, I mean, this is y squared. Okay? So, this will be 16y equals negative 3,520. Okay? We put 3,520 to the right side. Next, we're going to do completing the square on this y. We cannot do completing the square in our x because we do not have an x with 1 degree here. Okay? So, let's do it. So, 9x squared plus 64 y squared minus 16y plus 16 divided 2, b over 2 squared, okay? 16 divided 2 is 8 squared, that would be 64, equals negative 3520, okay? I have shortage of space here, plus 64 times 64, or 64 squared, and that would give us 4096, okay? So now let's continue. We'll have um, 9x squared plus 64, okay? We're going to uh, simplify this one. This will become uh, y minus b over 2, which is 8. Okay, squared equals equals 576. Okay, next we are going to divide uh, both sides and each term by 576. So that will be left with uh, 1 on our right side. Okay. Now, 576 and we, have also ha we also have 9. So simplifying, we'll have x squared over 64. Okay, so 576 divided 9 will give you 64. Plus 576 divided 64. 576 divided 64, that will give us 9. Okay, so what's left in the numerator is y minus 8 squared over 9 equals 1. Okay, so right now it's very clear that our a squared is 64 because this is the biggest one, okay, compared to 9. And we have our b squared is 9. Okay, so our a, the square root of 64 is 8. And the square root of our 9 is 3. Okay? So, we also have our center. Okay? X squared, which means our h is 0. And our k is 8. Okay? And if ever you are uh, baffled, how did I get that 8 thing? Eh? So, actually like this one. Y minus 8. I'm going to equate that to 0. And y, okay, and transferring negative 8 to the right side. That will give me 8. Okay? So, I have 8 here, there. But we are actually, uh, yeah, that's right. So HK, 0, 8. And we have our uh, semi-minor minor and semi-major axis. Okay, let's try to graph this one. Okay, now let's graph our um, equation. So we have our center at 0, 8. So we have 0 and then 8 units. So 1, 2, 3, 8. So we have 8. And then we have our A as 8. Okay, so that will give us, okay, let's start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it's somewhere here. And also 8 on the left side. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, x, 8. And we have 3 units on our B. So, 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, this is our, this is our ellipse. Okay. Uh, it's quite pangit. Okay. So, don't worry. Uh, that is somehow the, our ellipse. Okay. So, our last example is a word problem. Okay. This is one of the application. An arc has the shape of a semi-ellipse, top half of an ellipse. The arc has 8 feet height and 20 feet span. Find the equation of ellipse and find the height of arc at distance 4 feet from the center. So, this is my uh, interpretation to our problem. So, we have an arc with height of 8 feet. Okay, so this is our arc. Okay, I just put the design, but this is the most important thing. So, the height is 8 feet. Okay, and we have a span of 20 feet. Okay, so find the equation of the ellipse. So, we are going to find the equation for that one. So, remember that this is an ellipse top half, which means... This is a horizontal ellipse, okay? Because that would make sense why the, why the arc would um, that shape, right? Okay, so let's start. Uh, let us assume that our h and k is 0, okay? Which means our equation would be uh, center at origin, okay? So this, is, this 20 here, this is our major axis, right? Okay, so our major axis is 2a. Sorry. 
our 2a. So, our 2a is 20, which means dividing both sides by 2, our a is 10. Okay? And we also have our b here equal to 8, because that will be our uh, semi-minor axis. So, we have our a and b, which means our equation would be this easy. x squared over a squared, what is the square of 10? That is 100, plus y squared over, what is the square of 8? 64 equals 1. So now we have this um, equation of our ellipse, but we still need to find the height of arc at distance 4 feet from the center. So let's say this is our center, and this is 4 feet from the center, so we need to find, um, we need to find the height of this one, okay? So we need to find the height of that one, okay? Now I want you to think in depth about this one, okay? So as you can see, this is our equation, right? And from the center, it moves 4 units. Okay, so if this is an x-axis and this is the y-axis, it moves in what axis? Yeah, very good. It moves in x-axis, which means our 4, we're going to substitute this 4 in this x, okay? So that we can have or we can find the y value. That would determine the height of our arc, okay? Let's do this. So we have x squared, so x squared we have 4, okay? We have 4 squared over 100 plus y squared over 64 equals 1. Uh, the square of 4 is 16 over 100 plus y squared over 64 equals 1. Okay. Now I'm going to move the 16 over 100 in the right side. So I can have 1 minus 16 over 100. Okay. So from positive, it became negative. So now to make this one easier, uh, this one I'm going to make it 100 over 100 okay? because uh, we have 100 here and 100 divided by 100 just, would just give us 1. Okay. Now, 100 minus 16 would, will give us 84, okay? 84 over 100. Um, actually, we can simplify that one, but later on. Now, we are going to cr cross-multiply this, okay? Remember that you can only cross-multiply when the sign in between is the equal sign. Now, we'll have 100 times y will give us 100y squared, and 84 times 64 will give us 5,376, and dividing both sides by 100, y squared will give us... 53.76 okay so squaring both sides okay squaring both sides y will give us 7.33 feet and that is the height of our arc right here okay so you can see the height is 8 and when we move it makes sense that it would be smaller okay so god bless in your ellipse in your pre-calculus class see ya